Hi everyone, so thus far for 2018, I have been absolutely hammering you about what your financial goals are. I've been talking to you about setting really meaningful goals where you feel completely connected and excited about the future ahead of you, where you jump out of bed early and want to take life on. I've also been talking to you about all the required brainstorming that you need to do, where you open up your head, heart and mind and realize there are so many things you can do to save extra money or earn extra money that are going to be able to give some extra cash that you can put towards the success of your financial goals, where you might see your debt levels come down faster and you achieve that financial goal a lot sooner, or you see your savings account um, grow quicker than you expected. I have spoken to you about the importance of being really committed and dedicated to the journey of financial success, where you actually feel really excited and you feel really empowered and you know committed and connected to the future ahead of you because it's going to take you to a much healthier and happier place where you experience financial independence and financial peace. So for this video, I want to give you seven different ideas that are going to really be really easy that everybody can possibly do to help, I guess, boost your savings. Make sure you've got a little bit of extra cash available for the next 30 days that you can put towards the achievement of your financial goals. And as I said, these are really easy things and these are things that I actually do myself particularly if I know it need to have a tight month or I really want to achieve my own financial goal that little bit faster and get, you know, leapfrog or get a bit of a feeling of a boost. So I really hope that you enjoy this video and I want to make sure that you watch this video all the way to the very end because I have a really big question to ask you. But in the meantime, here are seven things that are going to help kickstart the achievement of your financial goals for 2018 where you can save some extra money. All right, number one, take your lunch to work. I worked out when I do this, I save at least $200 per month. Now it's really easy, taking your lunch to work doesn't need to be expensive and it doesn't need to be time consuming. Just simply cook a little bit extra food at dinner time when you get home, put it in a Tupperware container and make sure you take it to work each day. It's also fantastic because it forces you to eat healthier and you will enjoy seeing a lot more cash left in your wallet at the end of the week. Number two, borrow from a friend. So many times I've had to go to an event and I haven't had the right dress that's appropriate or, the, or a dress that people haven't seen me you know, wear 900 times before. And I will simply call up one of my you know, dearest and most fashionable girlfriends and ask if I can simply borrow something. And the great thing is about this is it's great for our friendship because I can then lend them stuff back. But this has saved me hundreds of dollars throughout the year. So I know if I budget, say, about $400 for a dress, I'm instantly going to save that money when I can borrow something from a friend. And it's not just necessarily clothes. You can also borrow shoes. You can also borrow handbags, occasionally some jewelry if you're really lucky. And sometimes I even borrow some of my girlfriend's garden gadgets. Fantastic from a minimalistic point of view because it means I don't have to worry about storing it away and it taking up lots of space. But it means we're also sharing it and we're also reducing our cost. And it's my girlfriend really loves it when I borrow her garden stuff because she realizes I actually really value her advice and her opinion and actually admire the way that she maintains her own garden space. Number three, have your own wine at home. How many times have we gone out with friends over to a friend's place and we're running late, we feel guilty, and we just kind of grab a really expensive bottle of wine from a bottle shop that's probably not great value for money. Now, by buying in bulk and stocking your own, I guess, creating your own little mini cellar at home where you have things at home that you can put in the fridge when you want so they're ready to drink, this has saved me quite a lot of money. I've worked out at least 50 to $80 a month. Now, I am not a big drinker. I don't really drink during the week. And, but I do love a glass of rosé or a glass of champagne at the end of the week. But by actually being prepared and organized and having that wine at home in the fridge where I've bought it in bulk and actually saved money, it really does add up. Number four, make your own coffee at home. This also saves you a lot of time as well because you're not standing in line waiting to order your coffee and waiting for your coffee to be made. Now, if you're a sucker like me, I can't just go and get one coffee. I have to get some banana bread as well. But if you can learn just a couple of days per week to make your own coffee at home or actually make your coffee at work, this is going to save you so much money. And I know for me, when I do this, it saves me at least $20 a week, which is over $80 a month. 
Number five, become a homebody. Now, if you're a bit of a social butterfly and you find that every weekend you're spending hundreds of dollars catching up with friends, going to restaurants, drinks, bars, cabs, Ubers, learning just to have one weekend a month where you just stay at home is so good for the soul. You really recharge your batteries and you actually get so much done because you get time back for yourself. Now, when I do this, I work out, I save at least $200 per month. And I don't need to be a social hermit. I can easily have friends over for dinner where everyone brings a plate, or I just simply have a really relaxing night with Rocco and Tom where we just maybe watch a video together or a movie, or we read a book, or we just have a really healthy weekend at home with lots of home-based activities. So good for the soul. Number six, food plan. Now, when I look at my budget, my biggest cost is food, particularly when I'm not organized. Now, as I've mentioned, I use Marley Spoon. It saves me so much money. When I don't have food organized in the fridge where I've got all the key ingredients to make that meal, I have to head to the supermarket. And as I said, I'm like a complete sucker. I can't walk into the supermarket and just get exactly what I want from those lists, especially when I've got Rocco saying, I want this, I want that and trying to negotiate with um, a potential meltdown in the middle of a supermarket. So make sure you actually have a food plan. Look at the, the, your diary, look at what nights you're gonna be home, look at what you need to eat to stay strong, fit, and healthy, and make sure you have all those ingredients ready to go so you don't need to make another trip to the supermarket where you get tempted to buy ice cream and lollies and all these extra things that you get tempted to as you're walking down those aisles. Number seven, sell some stuff. There's gotta be some clothes that you don't wear anymore, old toys, old books, maybe some old mobile phones and laptops. All those things can be sold. You can sell them on eBay, you can sell them on Carousel, you can sell them on Gumtree. There are so many groups on Facebook where you can buy, swap, and sell. Get rid of that unwanted junk and clutter in your house, free up some space, free up some energy, and sell that stuff. Now, all these things, when you do these things, I want you to consciously take that money that you save and put it towards the achievement of your own financial goals. As I said, these are really easy things to do and things that I do personally, and they make a huge difference. They are part of the reason where I am today financially. Okay, so this brings me now to the final big question that I need to ask you guys. And I would really appreciate it if you could answer this by putting a comment in the comments box below. I am going to be doing Frugal February followed by Manifesting March. Now previously, I've always done a vlog style video, but just one for the month of each of those months. And you guys have always loved those videos, but I've had a comment below where you guys wanted, to be more, wanted me to be more engaged with you throughout that month. So my big question to you is, how would you feel about a daily vlog style video on my YouTube channel as to what I am doing each day for Frugal February and each day for Manifesting March? What am I doing? How am I coping? Where's my headspace at? How am I feeling? Um, I'll take you around on my daily today basis and, and share with you when I can. So if you like this idea and you don't think it's going to drown you or overwhelm you or suffocate you with my videos, let me know by putting a comment in the comment box below. Now, I really hope that you can use at least one or two of these ideas that I talk about in this video to help you come up with some extra cash that you can put towards your financial goals. Remember, every single dollar counts. Progression is key because that's what keeps us motivated and dedicated to success. Also, if you have any other ideas that can help people come up with some extra cash that they can put towards their financial goals, please put it in the comments box below. And I will see you later in the week for uh, lifestyle love, which is going to be a fashion video. Ciao for now.